one for talk 99.3 nigeria info of course the station for the nation we are here again for another episode of uh, power solutions brought to you in partnership with uh, energy investment company all on uh, ably represented here as my co-hosts by the policy and partnerships manager that's the adobe Oniwinde. She is my co-host for this episode, and we have a guest. Hi, good to see you Hello. again. Hello. It's been a long minute. Absolutely. I haven't seen you in a bit. Yeah, you're looking younger every day. Hey, What's hey, the hey. secret? <laughs> that one actually stumped me. <laughs> joy. I know. Joy, joy. Absolutely. I mean, Happiness. It's a good way to go. Awesome. We have yet another interesting guest to join us on the show today. Yes, we do. I cannot wait to, you know, dig into the conversation. Yes, we do it is my great pleasure and honor to welcome sandra chukudozier who is the founder and ceo of salfa energy which by the way mm -hmm. is probably the fastest growing solar home systems company in nigeria wow sandra wow nice Welcome. to be here thank you so much for having me the entire stadium is clapping for you right now welcoming you thank well you. done indeed well, like you already know, it's uh, where we bring the key players in the power uh, um, sector, specifically those in the off-grid, those who are bringing solutions to the power problems that we face as a nation. And our today's conversation is themed, Upscaling Affordable Energy Solutions. Upscaling Affordable Energy Solutions. Like you heard, I guess they're seated, uh, Adobe's by my side, and we're set for the conversation indeed. Well, um... You know, I'm, I'm going to let Adobe start with the first question. I mean, it's the sure. ladies first. Sure. So let me be a gentleman. Sure. And you're outnumbered in this room today. So, hey. Yeah, I have to be it myself. Excellent. <laughs> Sandra, tell us, give us your background. What okay. is your journey? How, what was your journey to renewables okay. or to, to Salfa? <laughs> yeah. So the journey has been quite an interesting one because before founding Salfa, I started my career at the United Nations in New York. And it was a very pivotal time when the SDG goals were being launched, the 70th session of the UN General Assembly in 2015. And so I had a front row seat to see the future of energy, you know, evolve be before me. And coming, you know, from an oil and gas uh, upstream downstream family owned business, it was a different view of energy, it was that energy had to be clean, affordable, modern and reliable. And so as a young person such as myself, that really struck a chord in my heart and I wanted to be part of this energy transition. I began to look at the continent, I began to look at Nigeria to see exactly what was going on there. And I saw a lot of amazing companies doing great things. And even besides that, I had a lot of mentorship from women at the UN at that time. I had mentorship from Rachel Kides, the former um, SE for All CEO, and Amina Mohammed, who was then the uh, special representative for SDG goals. And so at that time, there was a lot of momentum for me yeah. to change my view on energy. And that was what led me to my career now at Salva. You've mentioned that you have an oil and, uh, oil and gas background and um, you've touched a bit about um, how you got into renewable energy, of course, the inspiration. But here is my question, really. Um, as a woman in a male-dominated sector, mm -hmm. you know, um, running a company can be a, a great deal. Have you, how have you been dealing with that? So for me, running the company, growing up, I watched my entrepreneurial parents run mm. a business and i always had a seat at the table i was always told about what was going on in the business so from a very young age mm. i mean four years old wow. my parents had a, a house in the factory and so mm. naughty me i ride my bike around the factories mm. late at night you know troubling all these like factory workers and asking yeah. them questions so i i saw firsthand what a business structure looked like my mom mm. was 25 and she had over eight companies that she was running wow. oil and gas manufacturing real estate so she modeled what it was to be a young leader at that time and even back to Salfa, what i do we are a team of alphas we are alphas on the move we aspire oh. to be that and so mm -hmm. The core of what we do is building leaders for tomorrow you know okay. starting with nigeria men and women mm -hmm. and having that team makes the work easy because you are not just having a team of people who are 
not passionate. They are audacious, you know, they're authentic in who they are. They're liberal and they're very passionate and they have the heart to, you know, go against the green. And that's what makes it very easy for me to do what I'm doing. Thank you guys. Oh, wow. Alpha team. That's wow. awesome. Yeah. So you come with a mentality of diversity, equality, yeah. but how do people react to you? Yeah, so <laughs> that's a very good question. Um, so, so let me start by saying that I, when it comes to, for example, people asking me the question of, oh, how do you cope, you know, being a woman in the middle of the field? Mm. Apart from the way I look right now, I, I just feel like I'm on a mission. I don't really, f I don't, I don't sense, oh, I'm in this room and there are five guys here. It's just yeah. me in that room. And mm. I guess people take the vibration that they see when they encounter me. Mm. They see me as somebody who is here to achieve something and they mm. treat me as such. So I think that's how they see me. In fact, you once told me, I'm going to go off script for a minute. You told me a story about how the um, entrepreneurs in, I think, Alaba Market. Exactly. How your tenacity. Tell us that story again. So, exa exactly. So, <laughs> let me, so let me come back to what I said. So that mm. story, you know, when I first started, I was going into Alaba, I do motor markets, mm. jump the bridge, bike, and go and see these distributors. And when they saw me, you know, this little kid, blonde hair, and then I had this tiny accents and so they were like ah, what's she doing here go uh, go to your office go to do your NYC or whatever and I just I didn't even care I was just telling them this is the product you know this is what we do we sell mm -hmm. solar solutions and I was just telling them you know this is the mission that the company has and so after a while you know they're like ah, you're different to ah, like <laughs> <laughs> means what's up what's going on here yeah. so, they, so, they, so they like me and they just took me under their wing and you were like hmm this product it go move oh but you supposed to do i'm um, this way this way this mm. way so it's just that whole thing of the energy you give out you just mm, have yeah. to you know give out the energy of what you're here to do to achieve make a difference I, i'm sure that someone listening out there should should learn a lot of things so far so good with just the little questions you've answered you, you know i can see a whole lot to learn from mm -hmm. your journey and it's quite inspiring i have to mention that mm -hmm. now let's get back to salfa um i would like to know uh, as a company what are your strategic focus areas uh, for uh, the sector okay so everyone needs power in nigeria mm -hmm. and the thing is the nigerian market is energy market is bottom heavy and so our goal is to bring the underserved and unserved into and up that energy ladder okay and we've done that by you know designing and producing products from entry level these yeah. products give you lighting phone charging mm -hmm. music playback bluetooth functionality for wow. the really rural and peri-urban areas and then we also have products that are productive use okay. that can power your appliances your tv laptop fan fridge freezers mm -hmm. and also dc compatible and so what we're trying to do with these products is to excite our customers to aspire to climb up that energy ladder mm. okay you've bought this entry-level products how can you buy a product that is you know even mm. more robust mm. in terms of what it can offer you and i always give this favorite example of mine on how we were able to do this uh, this very special customer miss maria miss maria for listening thank you so much mm. basically uh she was intrigued by what salfa was offering and she said okay you know what guys i want a product that can help me with my home lighting my kids has, has to have to do homework and we gave her our entry-level system mm. and she used that for a while she enjoyed it and in less than 12 months she came back and she said okay i have a chemist shop can yeah. you guys give me a solution that can bring that chemist shop's appliances under solar mm. so she mm. had her fan she had a fridge there for like some of these like um, vaccines and things like that and we gave her the solution on the uh, 12 month repayment cycle mm. and with those kinds of uh, stories we just show that people can climb up the energy ladder mm. that's what we're trying to do essentially mm. wow you have product we talked about products you brought something yeah mm -hmm. tell us about that so, on. so this is a productive use appliance and yes why not yeah. you can in lift it up okay. It's a productive use appliance, and mm. in this is a battery system. Now, All right, hold on a second. If you're, if you're listening on the radio, you might want to stream us live because we're streaming on Facebook and YouTube. It's Nigeria Info 99.3 uh, on YouTube, and on Facebook, it's Nigeria Info FM. All right, that way you could uh, find us and also view what our amazing guest is showing you, the product she's showing you right here. Uh, on this uh, beautiful episode of uh, Power Solutions 
on Nigeria Info. So go ahead, please. Okay, so this product has a battery inside and it can power lighting, about four bulbs. It okay. can power a fan. It okay. can power your decoder, your router. Okay. And it's just a an entry-level productive use system that allows you to be able to just do mm. business and home relaxation. It also mm. comes with a TV as well. It can power a TV as well. Okay. So it's quite wow. nifty. About 100,000 Naira and we can give it to you in instrumental payments. Wow. Yes. That, that's, that's beautiful. And this it also comes with a torch and um, yeah, torch. Oh, right. Yeah. So, so the, the buttons, I see some buttons there. What? Did, so, so basically, under the pay as you go um, solution, okay, you could pay weekly, monthly, and you know, quarterly. And so, mm. we give you a code when you make payments and you put it in here. And wow, the system unlocks. Oh. Yeah, wow. So, it's, it's really small, but it's really mighty, small but mighty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, i mean i could see the you you it would pass for maybe it's just a small yeah. box but yeah. so it's nifty Absolutely. you can take it to work you can bring it back you know that's the aim that's the goal wow you know so long your pocket so long your pocket i, like I love that. that that's a nice hashtag <laughs> so <laughs> let's go back to payment yeah hmm. you talked about you just talked a little bit about some of the services you provide uh, pay as you go hmm. um so we know that payment collection for power consumption is a challenge in mm. the yeah. sector fact right hmm. um but you salfa has actually secured enablers such as Infi Branches, who all on just did a two million dollar yeah, deal with last so month. Cool. Hey, hey. Um, Infi Branches, Paga, and InterSwitch. So, how, how do you feel about where we are with dealing with the, the payment issue? Okay, so a lot of progress has been made. I mean, the benchmark for payments is East Africa when you look at Mpesa. And yeah. what they're doing there is a okay. benchmark and that has led the revolution into Nigeria. We are we're getting there. A lot of big players have come in, in free branches that you mentioned, and they've really helped to go into this interland areas, this last mile mm. um, um, agents and customers. Mm. And so even recently, I mean, CBN granted a license to MTN and Airtel to go into, you know, uh, banking yeah. and so we're looking so so we can now see that there's a lot of competition in that space mm. and with competition i mean you're able to really scale up and help companies that need to reach these customers efficiently we're not there yet but i believe that we're on track to being there but safa on its own apart from you know using payment collectors we also um, work with distributors so we have a very fast conversion cycle and that has helped our business scale very quickly and helped us de-risk our business all right, so I'm going to squeeze in two questions into one, um, uh, just because they're all they're all related in a way. You know, first of all, congratulations. We hear that you um, signed a deal. Um, uh, that South Energy signed Say a deal. Say it slowly. It's yes. a big deal. But Absolutely. You have to really take your time on this one. So it's a one million dollars investment deal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a round of applause for that. That's 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 a Thank big you. deal, so to speak, and it literally saying. And uh, the deal is for, um, uh, you know, distribution of solar home systems in Nigeria. Okay. Tell us more about this deal. And um, I was going to also add to it that you also got, in addition to that, a $50,000 investment uh, provided uh, by uh, Allon and um, USADF. You know, tell us about these and specifically what this would do for Salfa. Okay, let me give a bit, a bit of background as to how, you know, I met Olon. Before Olon, we were working, doing the business. And for us at that time as founders, we never really believed in the fact that, you know, you could raise this money in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I always thought it was, you know, me against the world. And I just focused on what I was doing. And so it was a big surprise when I... The company got um, the first level of investment in, from yeah. all on and USADF, mm -hmm. and that really helps to um, enable us go into a different uh, payment model, pay as you go. Mm -hmm. And what we did was that we focused on the m most vulnerable parts of Nigeria, the Niger Delta, yeah. Aquaibom states, and our goal was to deploy 2,000 solar home system solutions. We're looking mm -hmm. at homes and businesses, homes that are in rural and peri urban areas. And the goal was to show them that solar works and we can upscale them to larger productive use appliances. Mm -hmm. And we were able to gather a lot of buyer insights mm -hmm. and demographic insights. Mm -hmm. We know customers, what they want on pricing, what they yeah. want on 
um, affordability, mm. what they want in terms of the energy that they use. Mm. And this really helped us to scale very quickly. And the project should have lasted for a year and six months and we finished and dusted that off in nine months. Oh, wow. So we're very proud of the team that did that. We just wanted to show that we are here to serve. We are a company that is, you know, fired up and blazing. And so going off the Quiet Bomb USADF All On Challenge, mm -hmm. um, we were again fortunate to have this um, investment coming in from All On, one million dollars, life-changing money that would go into reaching the furthest behind. Mm -hmm. And so the goal for this funding is that with SAFA as a business, the biggest challenge that we had was um, scale up capital, working capital, because we already designed the products, but the issue was that it gained a lot of traction and they were selling out very quickly. And so it was nice, but it was a conundrum because you had, we couldn't, we couldn't scale up. Uh, we couldn't go deeper with our existing distributors mm -hmm. and we couldn't get new distributors because it was always like, ah, this is your product, so we, they finish. And then you have all these naughty distributors who would buy, buy in bulk and even pay ahead of time. And so mm -hmm. it, was, it was very tricky. Mm -hmm. And so with all on coming in, I mean, it's that pent up demand that we've had and it's you know, pushing in this money into it. And now we're ready to go. We're ready to you know, roll out these solutions. And we're really focusing as part of SAFA's mission on the furthest behind in mm -hmm. energy access. Okay. Areas like, like Niger Delta, those mm. areas that have that stand the most to gain and the most to lose from energy access we want to mm. reach them first we want them to be in that journey okay. and so apart from that we also want to grow our workforce a diverse inclusive workforce South is about building alphas alphas on the mm. move who are willing to impact and tell the story of energy transition mm. and we also want to grow our distributor base you know bring in new players especially women we have a lot of women about mm. 75 women in our workforce wow. you know in directly and directly we want to oh. scale that up hmm. and you know bring in more products and other exciting stuff that i'll share in time awesome. so that's what so we're one here. of the reasons we do this show one of the reasons why all on sponsors this show is to raise awareness yeah right um so we talked about your um your active distributor the distributor numbers I, if i get these numbers wrong i'm reading them off tell me you have about 350 is that correct, correct. people cooperatives and um, traders nationwide yeah hmm. so how um how well how would you describe the awareness of the industry today compared to when you started so i have to say that there has already been awareness for solar even before i started however the issue was that solar was bogged down by products that were not good quality mm -hmm. and you know a lot of people wanted to make a profit and that was the challenge i had with this distributors with this uh, distributors initially because mm -hmm. they were focused on oh is it cheap does it work for six months and then mm -hmm. they buy it but then there was a lot of awareness that had to go into telling them that the products had to be quality conscious but quite frankly speaking, when I started, I mean, then you had uh, maybe one in 10 trade outlets stocking solar in the rural um, in the urban areas. And then mm. if you go down to rural areas, probably one in 20. Mm. And it's, you know, torch lights that have solar panels on them. Mm. But now the awareness is growing. Players in the space, you know, people like All On, REA, the World Bank are really pushing this narrative that solar is here to stay. And we've seen mm. a lot of traction. Oh. Interesting to know if you're just joining us, you're listening to Power Solutions brought to you by Nigeria Info in partnership with All On Energy Investment Company. And uh, of course, I'm co hosting this episode with Adobe Onyunde. She is the policy and the partnerships manager of All On. My name is Collins Teke. We have a, an amazing guest. You've been listening to her beautiful voice uh, talking about Sandra Chukudoze founder and CEO of Salfa Energy talking to us. And uh, before we wrap this all up, we have a number of questions for you. So um, for the solutions you provide, right, how affordable is it? Mm. And um, many still complain about the fact that, you know, affordability is like a barrier, yeah. you know, to having access to some of these amazing innovations in solar. So do you agree with that? And tell us about um, the affordability of your product too. Okay, so going back to the last question, it's about, you know, where is solar now versus when you started? Mm. And right now, we've seen a lot of m business models that have focused on making solar affordable. You have pay as you go, you have power as a service. Mm -hmm. And what they're trying to do is to break down the initial upfront cost of solar and make mm. it 
affordable. The truth is that solar is affordable as an energy source because mm. if you look at when the payments stop, when you purchase a full solar system versus the recurring payments of diesel, you can yeah. see the cost savings. Mm -hmm. Now, we, what we do, our products are you know, focused on the furthest behind, and so we're price conscious because mm -hmm. the Nigerian customers are price conscious and very aspirational. They want to have the best for mm -hmm. the cheapest quality. So That's how right. do you match that? And so, for example, our entry-level systems, they range from 20 to 30,000 Naira okay. and one of the lowest in the market. And that is actually what has helped us grow quickly mm -hmm. with our end users and also our distributors mm -hmm. because no one wants to tie down capital mm -hmm. uh, with expensive products. They want a fast-selling products. And so we've been able to match that. And also, bringing in the pay-as-you-go elements, further breaking that cost down mm -hmm. has made us, you know, blitz scale mm -hmm. and that was what we saw in Aquibum states customers coming in to buy these products because of how affordable they were okay. and so that's what we're trying to do in that area oh. SDG goal seven hey my goal your goal <laughs> I wrap it. let's share what is that and how do you <laughs> see Nigeria attaining that goal sustainable development goal seven my goal you know to ensure affordable access to clean modern energy um, that goal was part of the SDGs Agenda 2030, which was launched in 2015. Water shed at the UN, you know, people were excited about it. So where we were then in terms of energy access was that we had about a billion people who didn't have access to electricity. In 2020, you know, fortunately, we had about eight, um, 789 million people. There's still a big gap because very critically, the time frame for the SDG goals to at last is 2030 mm -hmm. and so we are about eight years there you know there's progress to be made at this point in time but very importantly the progress has to be made with partnerships mm -hmm. at a global level so we've seen for example the World Bank step in you know in Africa um, scaling solar and the, the agenda for that was pretty much to de-risk solar to bring in a lot of private sector players into solar so for example in Nigeria you have results based financing where you deploy a solar solution and you're given a grant for that and so we've seen a lot of deployments happen I think in the last two years over 200,000 solutions which would impact over a million people have been deployed oh. across REA and with the world and with them um, all on itself its portfolio of companies you know a mini grid solar home system part of service um, um, cold storage you can see an influx of, of um, companies coming in and it's, mm -hmm. and it's important because the finance needs to be there to unlock um, the thinking. indigenous thinking because we want people with indigenous thinking who can crack this energy problems. I always say that African problems should be solved by African yeah, companies. Okay. And right. so we, we aren't there yet, but there is hope. And the fact is just that climate change is real. And Absolutely. We really need to scale up all our efforts. COP26 happened uh, a few weeks back, mm -hmm. and you know global leaders are saying that they need to um, have a shift. 1.5 degrees Celsius is very important for the sure. world. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we're moving. I'm conscious of time, and I know That's you okay. are. But before we go, mm -hmm. we okay. need to know how to reach you, how to That's get right. your products. Perfect. How mm -hmm. do we reach you? So you can reach me on Instagram, Facebook. Um, WhatsApp. So Instagram, Facebook is Salpha Energy, S A L P H A Energy, okay. and you reach us there. And the phone number is zero eight one seven 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 six zero five two. You can take that again. Okay. So phone number is zero zero eight one seven 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 six zero five two, and it's Salpha Energy, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Thank you very much for speaking with us. And that's where we conclude this episode of Power Solutions. Ready? Are you Absolutely. sure? Yes, well, time is, <laughs> is fast spent. In case you're still wondering why we spend so much time trying to push renewable energy as a solution, just to remind you that um, uh, about one third of the world's population uh, is still using dangerous and inefficient cooking s systems. I do not also forget that there are about 759 million people who do not have access to electricity. In Nigeria, it's over 100 million people. Mm. And that means that there's a lot of work to be done. So if 
what we have is not fitting us, then we need to innovate. And that's why key players like uh, the amazing Sandra here are important. And the key companies like All On are important. And key media houses like Nigeria Info are important in this. You have a role to play and you can play yours from wherever you are. That's it for the show today. On that note, yep. nothing we are to thrown add. away. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sandra, it was Thank lovely having, having you. Thank, Thank you for you. being here. Absolutely. Well, next week we'll be here again for another episode of the show. God bless you and God bless Nigeria. Bye for now. <laughs>